I'm Triple AFX. This is Chris taking a look at the upcoming week of February 26th. Monday is going to be a pretty much non event session. There's really nothing. I mean, maybe new home sales if you're trading certain stocks, but beyond that, I just don't see it being a big mover. Tuesday, we get the consumer board consumer confidence numbers coming out of the United States. Might be important only due to the fact that the consumer in America needs to slow down if inflation is, in fact, going to drop. So that's been a bit of a problem at this point in time. Wall Street has been extraordinarily resilient, so we'll have to wait and see. Now, on Wednesday, we start to pick up a little bit of momentum. We get the Australian CPI which obviously will move the Aussie dollar. But a half an hour later, we get the RBNZ out of New Zealand giving a monetary policy decision. There is the possibility that they may have to tighten later this year, but it is not expected during this meeting. What will be important is the rate statement, the monetary policy statement, and perhaps even more importantly in this particular instance, it'll be the press conference. Keep in mind, this is somewhat of a localized number as it is the New Zealand dollar. But at the same time, it can give you an idea as to how the global economy is going. Later in the day, we get preliminary GDP coming out of the United States quarter over quarter. Um, yeah, it's expected to hold steady. This will move the markets. If this drops, especially if it drops significantly, Wall Street's going to celebrate. They love the idea of cheap money coming. The reason... They aren't so concerned about. Crude oil inventories, of course, will have a localized effect on Wednesday on the crude oil market. That is worth paying attention to. We get G20 meetings. Nobody really cares. Somebody somewhere might say something, but in general, it's typically not a big deal. As we roll into Thursday, German preliminary CPI comes out. Obviously could move the DAX and the Euro. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. It is expected to increase inflation increasing in Germany while the country is in a recession. Now that is not a good place to be. GDP coming out of Switzerland. That's obviously a Swiss franc deal. Later we get Canadian GDP. That obviously will influence the Canadian dollar and Canadian related markets. This could be a big one, this core PC price index, because it is something that the Federal Reserve watches very closely. So if it gets hotter, then that's probably going to be good for the dollar and bad for the stock market. We also get unemployment claims a little later in the day, so that could move the stock market in the United States as well. Friday, very early, we get manufacturing PMI numbers coming out of China. That could move a lot of markets. Um, so keep your eye on that. If it ends up going into expansion, that could be a sign that the global economy is finally picking back up. And then late in the day, we get manufacturing PMI and revised University of Michigan consumer sentiment. This here, unless it's revised much higher, probably will be a non-event. This could be an event if it's above expansionary, the 50 level. If not, unless it's a complete miss, it probably will be overlooked. And quite frankly, by that time of the week, typically we're already looking to the weekend and nobody cares. There is no jobs report because Friday is the first. So that will be the following Friday. Keep that in mind. Okay, so let's take a look at some charts here. This is the US dollar against the Japanese yen. Has been very quiet all week. However, when I draw a line chart, you can see what I see. It's a little bit of a dip and we're trying to curl higher. So with that, I do think eventually we, we rise. Any pullback at this point in time should see a lot of support near the 148.5 yen level. Eventually, I do think that we challenge 152. Breaking above that opens up a bigger move. The S&P 500 rallied early during the trading session on Friday, but has given back quite a bit of the gains in a sign of exhaustion. Not a huge surprise. The 5,000 level, I do think will attract a lot of attention if we get that at this point, 93 point drop. 
that more likely than not would have traders coming in to pick up value. I, I certainly wouldn't sell the S&P 500, but there is an argument to be made that's a little overdone. NASDAQ 100 made a fresh high during the day, only to turn right back around on Friday. When I look at this chart, it looks like the 20-day EMA and the 17,500 level could come into the picture. Certainly it looks bullish overall. In the weekly candlestick, you can see that we had initially fallen only to turn around and rally. Aussie dollar daily chart, you can see that we continue to struggle with a move higher. So even though it was a little bit bullish here on the weekly chart, certainly it looks like we're going to struggle. And that does make a certain amount of sense because there are a lot of reasons to think that risk on, risk off favors risk off at this point. Euro, you can see it's just languishing in this general vicinity. Weekly candlestick looks almost identical to the uh, Australian dollar. So what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that everything right now is about the US dollar and the other currency doesn't matter. So keep that in mind. And that's not a huge surprise. Everybody's paying close attention to the interest rate situation in America. Looking at oil, we had a rough Friday, but you can see we've been chopping around all week. This is the U.S. oil market. We just continue to bang up against the $80 level. Brent is going to be the same situation with $84.50. Both of these do look primed to be markets that will go higher given enough time. Uh, Short-term pullbacks are very likely as we build that basing pattern. Keep in mind, as we head into spring, it is very possible that traders will look at this through the prism of more demand coming down the road via driving and flying and possibly even the economy if central banks around the world continue to loosen monetary policy, thereby making the idea of cheap money driving up need for energy in industry. So this is silver. You can see silver has, con or gold, excuse me. You can see gold has expanded on Friday to finally break above this 2030 level. When you look at the weekly candlestick, it does look rather good. Um, you know, this is probably another situation where you're paying attention to the US dollar more than anything else or interest rates in America. Take your pick, same thing. Um, ultimately, I do think we go to 2075. Now this is silver. Silver initially sold off and then bounced during the day. You can see, though, we're still kind of struggling with $23.50. Anything above there will release silver to go much higher. And at that point, I think you would gain a dollar. In the meantime, I like the idea of buying short-term pullbacks. It offers value. $22 underneath has been a hard floor multiple times in the past. And I think that might be the case this year. We'll have to wait and see. So Bitcoin continues to grind away just below 52000 the weekly candlestick, you can see why that has mattered. Uh, Short-term pullbacks here could open up a move to 47500 And quite frankly, I don't think that's a bad idea. Yes, we got the ETF. Everybody got excited. This is the day they announced the ETF. We broke out and then turned around and fell. That was the smart money handing the money over to the retailers. Uh, retail traders, letting the retail traders take a $8,000 hit once everybody saw nothing but despair. Wall Street came back in and picked it up. It's the playbook. They are there to sell you stock, in this case, an ETF. Yes, it does influence Bitcoin because these holding firms now have to go in, buy and sell, and some of them hold like 200,000 Bitcoin. So it is enough to get the market moving. This has become an in, uh, institutional market. This is everything nobody wanted, unless, of course, you're on Wall Street. So be aware of the fact that this is a market that this year is going to change quite drastically. The dollar against the Canadian dollar has been more chopped than anything else all week. And I think we're just kind of hanging around between 133.5 and 136. Really not much going on there. U.S. dollar against the Swiss franc, we continue to see a recovery. We broke higher, we came back, we found support, we're breaking higher again. Weekly chart, forming a hammer, looking very much like a market that wants to extend higher. Now, when I look around the Forex world, this isn't necessarily a dollar story. This here is a Swiss franc story. 
The Swiss franc looks very similar against most currencies and therefore shouldn't be a huge surprise that we've seen this. In fact, I'll bring the Swiss uh, franc up against the British pound here, the pound Swiss. Look at this weekly candlestick. It looks like we are threatening 112. If we can break that, it opens up a door to 115. The 200-day EMA underneath continues to offer support. So I do think a lot of people are going to be paying close attention to that. And on a daily close above 112, I think we get another 300 pips. The DAX had an interesting Friday. We pulled back after this massive move on Thursday. And the weekly candlestick looks like that. This is a market that is ready to go higher. We now have 17,000 as a short-term floor and most certainly 16,250 euros would be as well. And that's assuming we can even get there. A lot of people banking on the ECB cutting rates and that has Germany excited. FTSE 100 continues to build this huge rounded bottom messy thing. You can see the week was pretty much a wash. If we can take out 7,800, then the FTSE 100 or the UK 100 can continue to go higher. Until then, I think you're looking at pullbacks as short-term buying opportunities. Dow Jones 30 originally rallied, gave back some of the gains late in the day. I think we are looking for an area to pull back to. What that is, I don't know yet, but I do think that you have a situation where the 37,050 level is about to be replaced. We'll have to wait and see how that is. According to the latest surge, it'd be right here at 38,587, but it'll, I don't know what I read into that yet. I think it's just buy on the dip, period. British Pound has rallied a bit during the trading session on Friday and then gave back gains in the same pattern that we've seen in the Aussie and the Euro against the US dollar. When you look at the weekly chart, you know, it's it's been a good week, I guess, but we're still stuck in this 250 pip range, and I don't know if we're going to break out of that anytime soon. Nikkei 225 stalls on Friday, but this is a good thing because we have seen such a massive shot higher. The fact that people are willing to hang on to this into the weekend speaks volumes. It's also worth noting, though, that we're up about 19% in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 weeks. So that might be something to keep in mind. What that tells me is you do not want to short this market. But what you probably want to do is find some value. Dollar Mexican peso continues to go sideways and do nothing. Uh, the 16.62 level is a major floor in this market. Um, on the monthly chart, you can see it. On the weekly chart. You can see it if I zoom out enough. You can see what I'm looking at. So just like this general vicinity, we are trying to find a bottom. If we break down below 16 and a half, the bottom is going to fall out of this market. Euro Swiss certainly looks like it's trying to break out, but it hasn't yet. Be cognizant of the 200-day EMA above and the 0.96 level. If we can clear that, the 0.97 level could be calling Otherwise, pullbacks at this point in time should see the 0 0.9450 level offer support. Ethereum continues to be noisy. You can see the entire week was spent kind of grinding sideways. There's your weekly candlestick. We did rally a bit, 3,000, a bit too far. I think we do probably pull back. We'll have to wait and see. I'm not... Um, I'm not sold quite yet. What I would love to see is a pullback to the 50% FIB on the daily chart here, down to 2,600. The CAC 40 in Paris, straight up in the air. This is a market much like the DAX. You're going to want to buy pullbacks on. Not a lot to say here other than we are about to hit 8,000 euros. I don't see anything stopping that from happening. Uh, when you look at the daily chart, you know, you can make an argument for just putting a line every 100 euros. And using that, you know, and, and sometimes, sometimes it really is that simple. Just using that as your guide. Uh, so in this case here, it would be 7,800. And then I would put another one. seventy nine hundred, And voila. So you can see this is a market that very structured. I like that, but I don't like the fact that we have basically gone up 
for the last two weeks. Yeah, straight up there about 6%. That, that does look a little frothy. Not horrible, but frothy. Litecoin, I did a daily analysis on this uh, going into Monday. You know, this is your daily chart. This is your weekly chart. This is a market that's very quiet. But what I am interested in when it comes to Litecoin is the fact whether or not it'll play catch up to Bitcoin. You know, it could go up to 175. So we'll have to wait and see. Short term pullbacks continue to be buying opportunities down to about 65. Just nice grinding sideways trading action for you to enjoy. With that being said, if you got value out of this, please subscribe to our channel. Give it a thumbs up. You know the routine. Thank you.